All right, it is six o'clock on Monday, September 19th, or not Monday, sorry, Thursday, September 19th. I will call to order the Town of Rutland Select Board and Board of Public Works meeting. Um, we are meeting in the lower level of the Rutland Public Library. Um, we are available on Zoom and we are being uh, live streamed on cable and recorded for re-airing on local access, YouTube, and all the other social media. Avenues. Um, if we can please stand for pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. There are four of us in person tonight. Um, I believe Harry will be joining us, but a little bit later. Um, this is an off-night meeting. I appreciate everyone's attendance. Um, thank you, everyone. Um, I think we have one person here for public comment. If you don't mind, I can take public comment. Sure. Name and address, please. Of course. Hello. Uh, my name is John Dapre. I live at uh, 88 State Road West in Westminster. Um, I uh, <clears throat> I also own a property here in uh, Rutland, uh, 204 Barry Paxson Road. Uh, Barry Paxson Road is uh, it's located in the Village Center District. Um, I'm interested in revitalizing the property and uh, opening a potential marijuana dispensary there. Uh, the Village Center District is one of the allowable zones for the town. Um, I uh, the current zoning bylaw allows for only one marijuana retail establishment. I drafted a petition uh, for a warrant uh, article at the, uh, the town meeting you guys have coming. I'm working on the signatures um, to change the uh, 89.C to basically increase the percentage from 20% to 50% of uh, off-premise alcohol establishments. In essence, this would change the bylaw to allow two uh, marijuana retail establishments. Basically, I, I came here tonight to ask you guys if uh, you might consider either uh, sponsoring the amendment to go to the, the town meeting in an effort to ensure the article is properly vetted and re reviewed by the town council rather than have any confusion on the town meeting floor. Uh, at this time, I'm only asking for the board to place the article on warrant, not necessarily for the board's support. Uh, and if that wasn't a possibility, then maybe uh, if if possible, if we could ask for like an extra week of time to continue getting the signatures. I only found out on Tuesday that uh, it was closing at Friday at 12. So that was basically what I wanted to come and introduce my guy, myself and it's for you guys. So that's all for me. Thank you. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think generally for public comment, we don't, we usually just take it and listen and kind of go. Um, I think generally for anything like this, this is a zoning bylaw change. So um, historic, historically, they either go through uh, the planning board zoning by, by bylaw subcommittee <laughs> um, or a citizen's petition kind of that then um, we would, we and planning board would look at and either agree to sponsor or not to show that there is some broader interest in the community um, to, to bring forward. Um, I don't know how you know, the board feels or anything, but um, I know historically that's kind of how it's been. Yeah, uh, through the chair, are you looking for an opinion as far as one way or the other with the business? No, no, I'm not, I mean, I don't think necessarily for the business right. itself, but just, um, you know, I appreciate that people are coming into town, right. buying some, or taking over some property that is not doing so well mm -hmm. or is sitting vacant and trying to revitalize it. Um, but I think it's more just of the process piece. Um, and can I ask you, this is a, uh, it's just, it's just not a grow facility, right? It's no, a no, store. No, okay. Just so a, it's just a, a retail, retail, a retail store. dispensary. Sure. Yeah. I mean, not that it matters tonight, but to me, any business, is good business in this town, yeah. I say sure. thumbs up, but, but I think, I think this is where I struggle a little right. bit with the process piece. I think if we had a citizen's petition to show that there was legitimate interest from the mm -hmm. community, then we as a board could kind of take it um, at a future meeting and decide if we want to sponsor it. Planning board could also look at it, decide if it's something that they're willing to sponsor um, and and do it that way. Um, the other option is to go through um, planning board and planning board zoning bylaw subcommittee and work with them to change, to, to draft a, a, 
a zoning change that would allow that um, 20% to go to 50%, I think. But the time was when this Friday? Well, so I, at Tuesday, I found out that it was Friday at 12. I'm not from here. So I started working on it. We're probably like 30, 40 through signatures wise. And then I passed out these to probably 10 or 15 people that I've met here in town since I started doing this process. So I, I don't have all of them back yet. So I, I realistically don't know how many I have for tomorrow at 12. But if I wasn't able to to get them, then basically that's why I was asking if potentially if you guys were able to sponsor it, then it could go to like the town to look at. Um, but yeah, I don't on the on the, the meeting on the 21st, the November 21st. Right. Yeah. So I think we. I don't think we can sponsor it at this point. I mean, we don't even know what we're sponsoring. Not not like in in approval for it, but just to like have the town take a look at it because I believe if that were to happen that the town council has to look at it and like see if it would be. We have to agree to do that tonight though if it's the warrants closing tomorrow. Yeah I mean yeah. the option is we could draft like I think Austin correct me if I'm wrong we could say that we would take it and place it like not necessarily place it but consider it be willing to kind of consider it at a at our placing meeting um but yeah, I'm not I thought, sure if, if the board was willing um you know, right now, you, if, if you wanted to make a motion and do a placeholder just so we can plan for it um, for the draft warrant for you to consider during your yeah. finalizing the warrant discussion. Yeah. I just... And I, I think, is there a planning board next week? Uh, next yes, week? on Tuesday. Yep. Yeah. So. so I think that the, for full disclosure, we could do it that way, I think, and say that we would consider it as a placeholder, but there's no guarantee sure. that... The play that that we select board would place it. Um, <coughs> if we wanted it placed, then it would to guarantee placement. It's the Signature. way to do that is the the citizens petition. Um, so that's kind of, and I I can't speak for the entirety of the board. I think sure. if we put the placeholder and have um, ask planning board to look at it and everything as well. Um, you know, I think that there, but. The history in town is also that it, the marijuana stuff is a little bit divisive, so it's not always a guarantee that even sure. if it's placed, even if it's placed by a citizen's petition, that it's going to be a guarantee walkthrough. Of course. Um, but again, it's new, it's new business, and that's what we hear a lot in community that we need new business. Sure. So I don't want to um, sway you either way. Okay. So I think um, if you know the board is interested in place considering it as a placeholder. But again, if you want to ensure that it's absolutely on, you can still try to get the 100 signatures by Friday at noon. Um, I don't think we can really uh, extend the warrant open, opening period. It's been set and communicated out. Um, and I think that that would. Okay. So what, what's the board sense? Would the board be amenable to considering a placeholder? Again, that doesn't guarantee yeah. that it's going to be placed. But um, so, if you want to continue with the signatures, sure. or um, so, motion for a placeholder is that what we need? I guess so. Yeah. Would that do it? All right. I make a motion that we uh, implement a placeholder for what's the address? Uh, Two hundred four Barry Paxson Road. Two hundred four Barry Paxson Road, possible. Uh, marijuana business, retail business. Yeah, dispensary. Yep. I think. I think more so of a rezoning. No, not rezoning. A, a zoning bylaw modification. Of the okay. marijuana to, to allow another establishment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So moved. <laughs> so it would be a zoning bylaw modification. Marijuana zoning bylaw modification. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second, a motion. The motion and a second. Is there any other conversation? And again, I just want to be very clear that this is just a placeholder. It doesn't guarantee that it will actually be placed. So um, I'll just keep working on the signatures, and then yeah. whatever yep. my direction from you guys is, I'll try to do my best that I can with it. And just maybe if you have availability to attend the planning board meeting, just to put it on their radar sure. next week. Of course. And to make if maybe you can just communicate out to planning board as well. John, can you email me? My email is on the website. Email me so then I have your email address and then I can follow up with you with some information. All right, okay? cool. Thank you. I'll just I'll hang out for the meeting. I have no problem. I'll get it after the email if that's cool. It was a good time here. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm like hanging out with you guys. So. <laughs> Yeah. We do have a couple of executive se executive sessions. So if you just email admin at rutlandma.gov, okay. he'll go to Tamika. Okay. Here's a motion and a second. Roll call. Paul? <coughs> Pardon me. Matt's and I. Ledroy. Galvin, I. Whiteman, I. So we have the placeholder. Um, and, and again, just, you know, it's not a guarantee. Sure. So Thank you so much for here. Yeah. Absolutely. Good Thank luck. You. So should I just write that down now and then take off for the meeting that you guys have? Or? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Hold on, here. Unless you're interested in water sewer rates. Yeah, you, <laughs> believe me, I appreciate it, but you don't want to be. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Okay, have a great night. Thank you. All right, moving into the um, under new business, the water and sewer rates, the setting of the fiscal year 2025 water and sewer rates. Oh, do we need to do this as Board of Public Works, or is this a select board? I forget. I think, have you already opened your yeah, meeting? I opened yes. this yeah. so. Perfect. Floor is yours. <laughs> Good evening, uh, Madam Chair, uh, select board members. My name is Steve Barrett. Uh, in terms of an introduction, at one point I was your interim treasurer collector for a few months. Uh, I'm a municipal finance consultant. In a prior life, I worked in Acton uh, for 23 years as the finance director. The really only import there would be we had a sewer enterprise fund, and I did a lot of rate setting there. At one point, at the beginning, we were setting rates monthly. We had such a rough time getting that public utility off the ground. Prior to that, I was an outside auditor, auditing 25 or 30 towns a year for about 15 years. Um, but thank you very much uh, for having me in tonight. So at the end of the day, uh, I'd like to go through, you know, our kind of current billing schematic for a rate setting. Take a look at 24. Did we learn anything from 24? Take a look at 25 and then a rate recommendation. You know, at the end of the day, uh, being a uh, enterprise fund in this state, uh, a public utility, we're highly regulated. Uh, we have to prove to the Department of Revenue that we can balance the budget. And you know, if the board says, well, what do you mean by balance the budget? Well, at the end of the day, uh, we voted some spending for FY25, a little over $3 million. Uh, as part of the tax rate setting process, we have to convince the Department of Revenue that our reoccurring revenues will pay uh, for that spending. So, you know, how, how, do, we, how do we do that? How, how do we do our billing schematic? Well, and I'll, and I'll go through this kind of slowly. Um, these are our major revenue categories. Down the left-hand side is the type. For, for the board to key in on, under the measurement means how do we bill it? Water and sewer is based on usage. So by that very nature, usage, could be some volatility there. Our other items are built on uh, dwelling units. We know those already. Um, the rates will last change for the most part annually, except for the I and I rate. And tiered, that just means the more we use, uh, is there a higher rate the way we go up the ladder? And we have that for water. So these are our, uh, this is the way to get there in terms of um, filling up that budget with revenue. Um, furthermore, here are the rates the last three years. Now, it's the same categories as the prior slide. The water and the water rates were tiered, so there was a 12% increase in 23 from 22 and a 9% in 24 from 23. So in the second column over, you'll see the 23 rates, the percent increase, and then the 24 rates. This is really just meant for historical data for the board. Again, this is how traditionally uh, the board would, would see these rates. Um, and you'd say, okay, what, what does that mean? Well, those are kind of all of what we do, but I think I'd want to kind of remind the board at the end of the day, usage revenue, water and sewer usage revenue, that's 71% of the fund's total revenue. As those revenue streams go, the funds go. Um, again, keeping in mind that no matter what, we have to prove to the state that we have a balanced budget. Um, you, you, you're looking still at, all right, 
How do we do in 24 before we even get to 25? Well, we estimate future billing uh, based, um, you know, based on a, a certain methodology, but we use, we look into the future and estimate our bill, billing flow for the future ahead of time. On some levels, that's a risk-based model. There's other models out there where, like at Acton, I, I built on prior year winter water usage. It was a known uh, volume indicator, and it allowed us to give our residents a, a monthly bill that was the same throughout the year. So in this model, and a lot of towns will do it this way, they look into the future to estimate the volume as part of the rate setting process. And that's what you know we're doing. Well, how did we make out in 24? Well, at the end of the day, if you look at our estimated volumes for water and sewer, again, the kind of the heart of the fund, uh, if you look at our estimated volumes versus what we actually build, um, we had a, you know, a 4% variance. And you might say, well, that, that might not be too bad. 4%'s not too bad of a miss. Um, well, when you, do, when you then go and translate that to money, uh, that volume miss where we estimated volume here and the actual volumes came in down here, that resulted in pretty much a revenue variance for our utility fund of 125000 um, And that's something the town accountant has to kind of contend with as we move forward. Now, this one wasn't, you know, this, this, this slide, you know, I say safe versus aggressive. Indirectly, our FY24 volume estimates were aggressive. We didn't mean for them to be aggressive. And, and maybe a better word would have been safe versus conservative. Um, at the end of the day, our estimated volumes were here and our actuals came in below. Um, you always want to be the other way. And indirectly, um, those 24 volume indicators were a little aggressive. And at the end of the day, when you have a public utility that you're overseeing, we got we got to get back to the safer side. Um, so, okay, we, we're we're comfortable knowing what happened in 24 hours. It's not what you want to, you know, it's not what you want to report out. But moving to 25, what? What, what's, what are we thinking? Well, in my mind, at the end of the day, our 24 estimated volumes were too high. They were greater <coughs> than our actual volumes for 24. I'm proposing to pull 25 <coughs> estimated volumes down even farther. Now, at the end of the day, one of the questions that might come to the board's mind is, hey, did you, did you dig into the change in volumes? What, from, the, from you know, 23 to 24, what, what'd you see? Well, one of the things the town administrator <coughs> asked me to look at uh, was the top 25 accounts, your biggest 25 users. It's a standard kind of cut of the data. <laughs> Uh, if you look at 23's actual usage versus 24's, uh, your top 25 accounts, that represents about 12% of your total flow. But if you just look at those top 25 accounts, their total billable flow went down by 9%. It's not on the slide, but it's I have that data. So again, we, what you're looking for is anything out of the ordinary. Well, uh, out of those 25 accounts, Eight had increased flows, 17 had decreased flows. Now these are billable flows, which I use the word billable, that's just kind of the flow translates to revenue. Um, furthermore, I, I have looked at, um, Austin had also said to me, hey, we're primarily a residential system. You know, we don't have a lot of commercial here. Can you take a sample of 15 bills or something, or, you know, just take 15 accounts in addition. So I looked at 15 random customers, and out of the 15 customers, 13 had decreased flow, two had increased. The 15 I looked at had a 14% uh, decrease in volume. So clearly, 
Uh, there's a uh, movement underfoot to conserve our most precious resource, which is water. Um, and at the end of the day, it's probably an older system that we have. But I'm proposing that we need, as a public utility, we need to get our actual volume that we're billing greater than the estimate. That's We need to be on that side of the fence. Now, to do that, um, I'm, the numbers bear out and you know, they've been reviewed with uh, upper management, including our finance director, town accountant. If this is going on the rate um, to hit that 3019000 in spending, um, using those new conservative flows, which are probably 9 or 10% below the prior year's estimated flows. Because again, we want to flip this equation. We want our actual billable flows to be higher than the estimate. The numbers pop out to a 15% increase on our major billing categories. Um, and at the end of the day, I've set a lot of tax rates over the decades. You can get um, the DOR, uh, if, if we don't demonstrate that we have reoccurring revenues sufficient to cover the 3019958 they can decline to set the town's tax rate and not let us send out our third quarter bills. It's, it's one of the, uh, I guess, thorns of having a enterprise fund. Uh, but again, um, that's, kind of the, that's kind of the presentation. Um, I try to boil it down to the basics uh, where, again, part of this is the way we do it, looking into the future, estimating flows. Um, that model in FY23, we did fine. We did fine on that. For some reason in FY24, it flipped. And again, I believe there's a, and it's a good thing to conserve water, except when you have a volume-based utility enterprise fund. Uh, so at that point, if you have citizenry uh, using less water, the rate has to go up to cover it. Uh, so, you know, I have a, there's a standard motion, but if there's any questions um, from the board on the data or the methodology, uh, I wish I had better news for the board on the, on the rate setting, but that's, the, that's where we're at, uh, in my, my opinion. Thank you, Steve. Um, I know the board, we have a lot of information handed to us tonight. Um, and I think we, um, my hope is that we do set the rates tonight. We have everyone here for that. Um, and I know kind of we need to get the rates set for billing purposes as well as for the tax recap process and everything. So that's my, my intent for tonight. Um, I have a question if, while everybody's kind of digesting, do you, is it possible that the decrease in, in usage if we is because we have done better education either through stormwater and or we've done better maintenance on pipes for sewer and every I mean most of the stuff is based off of water usage right so yeah um, I, I think you're you know the first part I think you're right on I think there's a national movement afoot you're hearing about you know uh, cities and towns around the country where the you know their water source, is drying up, so I think you're absolutely right that um, that our citizen is using less water. The the one caveat is we have an old system, and sometimes there's leaks in the old older systems, and you know you're you know you're unbuilt. So these are what's been built. So you know I I think the majority of this is as you say, Madam Chair, our, our citizens are doing a great job conserving our most precious resource. That being said, when you're in a volume based model, that in an indirect well maybe a direct way, it kind of skews the numbers when we don't build that to your point. Um, we don't we need to build that into our volume if we're going to do it this way. We got to assume our citizens are going to use less water, maybe, and that's kind of what I did for the 25 volumes. I pulled them down below the 24 actuals. I know a few years ago we passed the sprinkler. Um, one of the 
um, our conditions of or, uh, orders of condition through DCR um, was passing the new new sprinkler systems um, and everything. So I wonder if some of that is just a f you know the trends going forward to the conserving water and. I think yeah, I think you're right on. And again, I you know Austin asked me to look at some of the year over years. You should stay the actual data. So again, I started with the top twenty five because sometimes. Like when I'd be setting rates, sometimes you'd see something, whoa, <laughs> you know, the school, you know, some, but, but there's really not too, you know, there's, there's just a downward trend. There's, there's nothing really jumping out at me. And again, even on the residentials, the, the sample, you know, I'm a former auditor, so we always sample. So a sample of the residential just showed a kind of a, a continuing migrating trend downward on actual volume. So... I think you're right on. Until the end of the month, the town is encouraged not to wash cars, lawn, water lawns, and so on and so forth. So this is also, I think, contributing because I know that there's a lot of lawn sprinklers in houses around the area. Yeah, and that's, like I said, it's hard. And maybe down the road, the, the board looks at it a different way. But because it's a good thing that water is being conserved. But with a volume-based model, we bill on vo actual volume used. And if we estimate a certain amount of volume for a fiscal year, we need to get it to, to, to run the operation. And, but I, I think you're absolutely right. I think the, you know, you're hearing things around the country about uh, you know, water shortages and you know, what's going to happen years from now. And um, yeah, I think, I think everything we do that helps conserve water is a good thing uh, until we get to rate setting. And if, you know, we got to maybe build that into our volume estimates a little bit. And in working with Austin and talking with Donna too, we, we, we pushed this through, I pushed this through the management team. You're just trying to get that estimated volume at a very safe place and hope that the actual is above it. If I could, and, and, and another thing on top of the the safe thing is because if at year end of twenty five we had a deficit, the t the general fund would have to absorb it. So I just wanted to kind of clarify that, right? Yeah, yeah. It's so if we didn't raise it fifteen percent. You're saying the, you have to pull out of the general fund. Yeah, there's a risk that there's a risk. Thank you. That's a very good I'm word. Just saying yes, fifteen percent increase on people's bill is a lot of money. I'm paying a lot of money right now quarterly. Nice. Um, calculating the fit, sorry, no. calculating the additional, it's a lot. Yeah, that's, uh, may I ask a clarifying question? Um, where did the 3 million number come from? How did we the 3 million 19,000 is the amount that was voted for the sewer enterprise fund at town meeting for FY25. So that came, that was voted. Their budget. Yeah, that was the budget, the total spending that was voted at town meeting uh, back months ago. Was that uh, May or June? Nine. Yeah. So I, I'm i trying to make make sense. Like I understand why we're saying to me, now that I know where that number came from, yeah. that's what the town said, that's what we need to fund this for the fiscal year. But to me, it looks like we're saying we don't use that much. Is it actually, is that the amount we need to actually run yeah. Yeah. this? Okay. Yeah, so that's paying for water, sewer staff, uh, treatment and transfer to Upper Blackstone in the city of Worcester. Okay. You know, cost of running the um, two utilities. Okay. So, and we're saying the 15% increase is because there's less water being used, but we still need to be able to fund that cost. Yeah, the, that was there, are, there are cost increases in the fund, but one of the main drivers is how we actually do it. Okay. And the way we did it in 24 in terms of estimating the volume, um, I'm... I'm recommending that we keep pulling the volumes down more. So to your point, if if the 15, if you had to break it out, there's probably, you know, a three or four percent increase in the cost and the rest goes back to the volume based model. And I'm pulling those estimated volumes down because, you know, to your uh, question, you know, I if we don't approve if we if we don't convince the Department of Revenue that we have reoccurring revenues, I don't. I think they won't set the tax oh, rate. They won't. You are correct. So it they isn't. Won't. It isn't just they'll take it out of the general fund. 
And yeah, but I'm sorry. Let me clarify. That would be at year end. If if yeah, we still there's still we have to we there has to be an increase tonight. It's what we decide is best. But um, yeah. So so. But then if it's if we opt for not enough and it doesn't end the. It doesn't end up being enough at year end. If if there is a a, a negative um, retained earnings, then the general fund would need to absorb that. So yeah, the first the first hurdle as we move along after tonight or or past tonight uh, would be to get our reserve certified, and Donald get the reserve certified. But at some point when we get the tax rate set on enterprise fund accounting, they asked Donna how how she's going to pay for the three million nineteen thousand that was voted. Now, so that table, just Steve, yeah. th that table that uh, Steve presented with all of those rates, they quite literally, we have to present those in the form of a supplemental attachment to the recap. Um, and it, essentially, you have to prove that you're going to meet your 3019000 is the, is the revenue that we get from the bills, the utility bills, the only way to fund that enterprise? Is there... So yeah, so there's um, other components to how you know the water and sewer fund. So anytime there's new connections to the system, um, those are kind of also one-time revenues um, that also go into the water sewer fund. But obviously, one-time revenues, um, those are really hard to estimate. Yeah. Yeah, and we can't rely on those. As, yeah. Okay. And because if if to clarify, because it's a utility mm -hmm. and it's um, only the the properties, households that are using the, the water and the sewer are paying for it. Um, if we have to end up using the general fund, then that comes out of everybody's Everybody. everybody's tax, um, which ultimately the town is on the hook for. It, we have we offer water and sewer, so if the ratepayers can't cover it, then the town is m mandated to pay for it. But um, it's similar to a lot of our other fee-based services that we try to recover the costs from the users and not from, um, okay. Question? Sure. Recently, we've had a lot of building outside the center that goes to wells. We don't tax them on that. So they use water that we don't tax them on. Could those expectation be part of the fact that they are putting in wells and not being on the system that it's been going down the usage for one question. Uh, just saying. Yeah, I'm trying to wrap my mind around that. Um, water that comes out of the treatment plant to the customers is then used by our customers and billed. Um, the, the water you're talking about doesn't come right. from our system. Our residents are getting an alternative source for their water, and yeah, that that in of itself isn't helping because we need all the flow we can get. We need all the customs we can get. That's a great question. So, uh, the you know the expansion of uh, non hooked up um, customers that in of itself drives the number the other way. You're absolutely right because we're not getting that water flow. They're pulling that up from their well. But, but we think, didn't have that to begin with. So right. True, that true. Enough? I'm saying in of itself. Uh, yeah. I was going to say, I don't think, like, oh, it's um, not, I'm not aware of anyone that's a, a water sewer user that then has gone and put a private well in. The private wells mm -hmm. to be put in are yeah, and they've never, 15 to $30,000 yep. at least. So um, it's, I don't think that we're losing customers, existing customers mm -hmm. to wells, but um a lot of the ANRs and everything are not. Well, I'm not saying that we're losing people. What I'm saying is if we hadn't passed that law that says if you're building a house outside center, you can put in a well instead of hooking up to sewer, that that flow rate we're not getting. So that so the town isn't sharing all the water usage in the town from that. So here, are you talking to the, uh, I think this was a couple of years ago when the town implemented the water and I think also a sewer kind of moratorium. moratorium. Yeah. It's been with, expired with for a long yeah. right. time. And I was just curious yeah. if that had an effect at all. Well, I think uh, Select Board Member Gowan brings up a good point in that what was never counted in, but isolated in of itself, um, you know, one of these models, all else being equal, 
if we didn't have that and they came in, yeah, we'd have more flow. But well, and the, that I think was partly you know put into place because Mass DEP was restricting our our draw from yeah. Mushkapon, right? <laughs> right? So right. Mm -hmm. you know we've got restrictions from the state, and then obviously, you know, I mean, it's it's almost, it's almost oh, like the tail wagging the dog. You know, if we we have less water flow, which means that we have to charge our our, our citizens more money. So the more less water flow we get the more the citizens are going to have to pay for it. So we're saying to them, conserve water, don't draw, don't do this. But if you do that, we're going to up your rates. Yeah, That's the tail wagging the dog. It, and it's, it's like, really? Yep. But also water is a finite resource. So yeah. we, and we currently only have one water source. So we have to be, yeah. you know, and Mass DEP monitors that very closely. That's what a few years ago was... I mean, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I totally I agree with you. I think it just you know? it ties into hopefully some of our, our goals discussion where we have aging infrastructure that yeah. we need to improve to allow more tie-ins to successfully, as well as second water source that and I it's just like all a water related. water is a very touchy subject yeah. in this town it right is. now. Yeah. Well and, uh, it's an expensive business to run utilities. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I think even even a secondary water source that's possibly a second treatment plant, that's additional infrastructure, that's more staff. I mean, that doesn't mean that our budget's gonna necessarily stay the same True. and we have more users, right? So I think that's the thoughtful planning in yeah. terms of some of the capital and infrastructure means that we have to. Um, Go ahead, Harry. So you're looking at future revenue, and one of the concerns that Austin and I have talked about from time to time is when we go out to 2030, the DPW is looking for a total infrastructure of $10 million. That's going to come to sewer. I don't think that's going to come to the town, right? Because we're only in water and sewer. So we're not looking at a 15% increase at that point. We're looking at a lot more on all these borrowed monies. So how do we, as we go forward on that, how do we not say to our clients, we're going to keep charging and charging because wait till 2030 comes. So I, I'm trying, I, I, I have no answer to this. Yeah. And it's like, but this is what our citizens are facing. You know, well, I think in terms of uh, if you're talking a capital project like a new building for them, if that's what you're talking no, about, we're talking about uh, sewers lines. You're pipes. talking about sewers line, yeah, collection yeah. system. Well, I mean, yeah, what do you call it? A betterment if we do a system? Yeah, it's the people, the, the people whose row. Who, if you go buy their house with the pipe, they get a betterment, and we put the debt service on that over the life of the loan. Yeah. But to your point, Still someone's going to pay for it. Absolutely. And as the chair said, and most towns do it this way in an enterprise fund. They kind of sequester the costs with the users. Mm -hmm. right. But, you know, I'm doing a little consulting in a town where, where I think it's, it's all general fund. And, you know, that's, that's their prerogative. So if I might ask you one, one question. So what we're looking at here is we got two sources. We got the expense revenue and the water, and we got the revenue from our citizens. And what you're saying is at the end of the year, we want those to try to balance out. Yeah, we our, don't want to end up with two million in the fund and we don't want a two million deficit. Yeah, and we have to do it ahead of time. Like right now, it, it works a little sideways, but in when was your town meeting? May, was it? So in May of 24, we said, oh, we're going to spend three million nineteen thousand for that whole year. We have all the way until December of 24 to convince the state that we have necessary revenue to cover the whole fiscal year, and that's called a tax rate setting. But, yeah, you're right on. You, you have to match the spending with the revenue. And when you have a public utility, and this is one of the things I didn't like, well, not didn't like, but... You know, you look at public, you're, we're we're in the public utility. You have you're supposed to be over reserved, which and again that's a crazy term. But when those ice storms hit 10, 12 years ago, whenever it was, and you know these utilities paid massive amounts of money out of their reserves to get things up and running, and the insurance proceeds came in later. But you'll find that public utilities in this country are essentially over reserved. They have to be, to your point, that you know, you gotta kinda keep pulling it in and pulling it in, because you can't you can't go the other way. You can't you can't cut it so tight that your enterprise fund, 
you know, bounces off, you know, the reserve level bottom with state law because that's that's a hard way to run a, a business. But you're absolutely right. You got to balance the revenues and the expenses. This is probably a, a question for Austin, but when you're looking at the budget, we take capital expenditures in that have been approved into that budget, correct? Right. So it's not just the normal expenses, it's the amount of capital expenses we have in that fund also that has to be adjusted for the rate, correct? Correct. Right. Okay. Didn't we use it, retained earnings for the capital? I think that this is maybe a conversation for a future meeting as well, but I, I would be an Austin maybe just put a pin in it for Tamika for future, but is there a better a better or different way to calculate our uh, to reevaluate how we bill water and sewer? Um, you know, you, you kind of say that we are doing that forward trying to predict the future um, methodology, and that's I think how we have done it historically in town forever and always. And I don't right. think that we have been very good about being honest with ourselves as to where our water and sewer utilities stand historically. Um, I think the past few years we've been, we've had more aggressive rate increases because we've had those honest conversations um, and actually trying to, to get a, a true picture as to where we are and where we're going. But I would be curious if there's a, you know, an, a more balanced way to to look at billing and that's not a, a yeah. quite, we don't have to have that yeah. detailed conversation tonight but again yeah. um to your point that can maybe not have the big swing in um increases yeah again like i said in Acton, and this was when i got there they were just putting a shovel in the ground building the tra treatment plan the collection <laughs> system when we got together we talked about it and somebody said hey i want to we want to bill in prior year winter water usage a known factor ahead of time. It'll allow us then to match that volume against those expenses. And then everybody had the same monthly bill. They could budget for it. But yeah, we can absolutely have a discussion on that at a later time, Madam Chair, sure. There's, there's different methods of doing anything, yeah. of everything. Yeah, and I think there's pros and cons to all of it. But I think right now, before us, we have kind of the conversation, the presentation from um, the finance team, and um, I appreciate your time and the work that you've put into it. Um, Steve, I know you kind of did it as your interim, one of your interim, many interim projects, and I appreciate yeah. that. And Don, I appreciate you kind of, from the accounting and finance director standpoint, um, you know, supporting it. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know, I mean, I think I'm we... I'm just trying to figure out how to explain it to people, because yeah. I know the 99% population of this town that's not paying attention right now yeah. is going to get that whacked bill. Right. Yeah. And then see brown water yeah. fill their tub. Right. And uh, it's not right. going to be good. So right. I'm just trying to, how do yeah. we... How do right. we reach out and tell people? Right. I think some of it is is education and explaining that this is what we need to yeah. <laughs> to run the the utility for the town, mm. and this is how we we get that revenue and just. I think just a lot of educating so you're them. Be so the, we're you're going to be out front in this, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, no, I'm not saying it's going to be any easier, no, but to, to show them that we're not just pocketing a whole bunch of, right. you know, we're not just taking from them to pocket it and do yeah. something else with it. It's literally yeah, it's money being used it. to run it. It's just, it's a and tough time. It's That's just, all. yeah. So you're saying the bottom line, we got to balance or the state could give us problems. Yeah. Yeah. And I've been there. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's that's one of the, you know, when you have enterprise funds, that's the one thing I, I kind of always didn't like about them a little bit because I was, like you folks, I used to have them three, four, or five of them. And, you know, every now and then one of them would just be having some struggles and we'd have to find a way to convince the DOR that, but yeah, they, they, can, they can not set your tax rate, which means they can tell you you can't send out your February 1st bills. Um, but that's... You know, they're the regulator. Um, so, yeah, that's they have that authority. And but it, it, it's they, Donna will be banging heads with them on that in, the, in a nice way. She, she that's, that's the finance director, town accountant's um, side of the house. Uh, but, but, yeah, they will start with Austin and Donna um, on that, that issue, if there is one. May I ask one more question? Sure, sure. Just for my own knowledge. So I, I understand that we're being a little bit more conservative with our volume estimates for fiscal year 25 because we don't want to end up having 
le- money that we have to take out of the general fund. If we, for whatever reason, end up underestimating and, and the uh, actual values are over, what happens to that additional if, revenue? It, it, it pardon the pun, it flows to reserves. Okay, so we, we keep it we, to retain in that. Yeah, exactly. For- yeah, we, again, 23, we had a good year. Yep. That's exactly what happened in 23. Um, 24, it reversed, but uh, if we do beat the volume estimates, it goes right to reserves. And is that taken into account when we do the sewer rates for the following year? Next year, year it will. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. It, it'd be great to be sitting here next year going, hey, we, 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 the volume estimate was too low, the actuals came in higher, and that resulted in X, X dollars in reserves, okay. which okay. at some point could help maybe you know, knock down a rate hike. But that's how it works. And it goes to the water sewer reserves. Right, and so, right. like, we were presented, I think, that there was a shortage of yeah. 125000 or whatever, yeah. right? And so that would be coming out of the water sewer reserves as long as there's that fund, that money there. in the water and sewer reserves. Yeah, exactly. So water sewer reserves comes for, like, any variances or um, emergencies or, yeah. you know, some capital stuff or, you know. So that reserve stays with... The water and sewer with the utility, users yep, and the utility yep. and yep. everything. So it's so in your example, you, you'd want those positive numbers. Positive and not yeah, yeah, and and if we can get to that spot on a reoccurring basis, it really sets the utility on a solid front. How do our rates compare to the surrounding towns? You know, I got to tell you, I haven't looked, and I and I apologize for that. Um, I haven't really looked around on that. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we have to give as much. We have to uh, convince them that we have the revenue, whatever our rate structure is. But I, I don't have an answer to that, sir. I'm sorry. I was just looking for somebody moving here. Yeah, you yeah. Know, I, I, so I don't favorable, know. Not favorable. If I meant, and I don't know for sure. I don't want to misspeak, but I think in some conversations, and I'm not on water and sewer, so I don't see the water and sewer bills, but. In my conversation, I think I understand that water, we bill a little bit differently than a lot of surrounding communities. Um, and so our water rates are our water rates are comparable or better than surrounding communities, but the sewer is where the the increased cost is. But because of the way it's billed, the total bill looks high. I don't necessarily I don't have the data in front of me to to, to prove that. Um, but that's kind of anecdotal, anecdotally when I've asked kind of for breakdowns how I've I've gotten the information. I don't, Austin, if you have any insight. Uh, yeah, no, and just, uh, you two, you can go first. Are you sure? Yeah. Um, so I was just going to say from the education standpoint, um, I think it would be very beneficial if it's possible. Could we include like just like a little educational blurb in with the bill and then we can also post on the website it just to try to educate folks either ahead of time or as they're receiving the bill because I think it might stop mm-hmm. as many angry people coming in going I don't understand why why is this happening type that's, of thing. That's what I mean it, it, yeah, it being may not make them less you angry, know, angry <laughs> but it, it just again just to show that it's not like we're doing this just to try and put money someplace else this yeah. is to specifically cover this cost mm-hmm. there's no other source yeah Can so I are we using our reserve to make this 15 percent work or we don't have a reserve no we don't have one this doesn't contemplate any use of reserves uh but just uh just on the sewer um that the chair mentioned so obviously you know we have um, and I think that some of this is discussion for an executive session venue, but um, obviously through the treatment and transportation, there is, a, I think, a higher cost structure than some other communities would pay for treatment and transportation, right? So keeping that in mind that, you know, future years, if that cost structure goes down, that could also result in some relief for the, uh, especially the sewer fund and the sewer users, because we probably do pay a lot more. Um, but I think that's, we have the privilege of sending it through another community into a regional treatment plan. And that results in a different cost structure. So, How much do we have in our reserves? They haven't so, been certified yet. Yeah, they haven't been certified yet. It, it changes every year. So I think last year was, what, 700,000 of my... 650, 700. Six, yeah. yeah. Um, and we did vote at the special? 
town meeting last year. Yes. Um, to utilize uh, some of those retained earnings for the emergency filter repair at the water treatment plant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. um, but at this point, that 15%, because Jen had said about, I think it was Jen, about if we have this reserve, we can then maybe going forward predict it into our future cost rates. But here we're not touching it. At, at this point, yeah, and uh, at this point, the the the, um, the usage fees are all being adjusted, and those flat fees are all being adjusted. None of the we're not. I'm not recommending taking anything out of what reserves we do have left. Because I think okay. Steve had mentioned that for public utilities, you want to have a healthy reserve in case there's an emergency or um, some, you know. The, for whatever reason, the way we set the rate, it totally misses that there is a, a larger variance. So to, it's not a budget that we want to be completely and totally equal. We would rather have some in reserves so that we have that. Just to frame it for you, I know at one point, because um, we had capital reserves enacted and we had different reserves, but I remember at one point looking at some uh, national public utility. I mean... They were at, you know, 50% of the budget or 100% of the budget, the, the reserve levels of national public utilities. There are, it, it sounds outrageous, but you understand if you, if you live long enough to go through some natural, dis, natural disasters you, or natural disasters, you see how these reserves from a utility company perspective can be drawn down on. And But, yeah, the, the reserve levels of public utilities – Around the country, uh, they're, they're you know that some of them are very high. I, I, the reason I ask the question, it, you're going to leave here tonight. Yep. But I have to answer questions to citizens. Why? Mm. So I'm looking and saying, there, you know, somebody who's astute says, "You got all yep. this money sitting in reserves. Why didn't you use that?" Well, that I have to have an answer for. Well, and I think the answer would be. Gee, the remaining reserves we have, we'd like to hold on to to solidify the financial position of the utility fund. And uh, just to add to that, I also wouldn't say that we're very healthy on reserves with this. Well, I don't fund. think we are. Yeah. But I mean, but you at the average citizen out there yeah. who yeah. says we got seven hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah, we but don't anymore. We don't anymore. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, we, we, but will we? No. So. This 15% isn't going to replace that money. That's just going to keep us in good standing for kind of... This is just to fund the budget for this Correct. year. Okay. All right. And some of the expenses, if, if I can, it are, are DEP required. You know, because water is a, a precious commodity, yeah. there are a lot of mandates on, on ex that creates expenses for the town. So that $3 million budget is... There's not excess in there, right? Okay. Thank you. So I think Steve has prepared a motion. Steve and the team have prepared a motion. If um, I mean, I don't think any of us love a 15% increase. We have the data kind of to show the, the need for it. Um, and hopefully we can do some education and feel comfortable kind of having the conversation with our, with our residents. Um, as to the, the rationale and have sympathy with them. So the motion is in our packet as well as on the screen if someone is so go inclined. Ahead. Go ahead, Paul, you can read it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll do it. I don't I think am. any of us want to do it, sorry. <laughs> Take it for the team. I hereby move uh, that the select board approve a 15% increase of the FY 2025 rates from FY 2024 for water usage sewer, usage sewer, is it one? I and I. Oh, I and I, I'm yep. sorry. Yep. I and I water construction fees, sewer construction fees. All other fees remain unchanged. We have a motion. Is there a second? Okay, let me just... I mean, little language here got me confused. So we're talking about the water that people use. We're going up on that rate by 15%. Yep. But then we're going up on I&I fees at 15%. Yes, sir. And we're going up on construction fees, sewer construction fees, 15%. So it's not just the water that we're going up on. 
No, and all that's the other subset of fees. Yep, we're also increasing by fifteen yep. percent. Yes, sir. Okay. And again, that slide that showed that seventy-one percent of the the financial activity is the water and sewer usage. But yes, we needed to. I needed to take those other categories up as well. Okay. And and here just a. Quick on that, if, if you were to not change those, the increase to the usage fees would, would be even more so. The what would? To the usage fees would be oh, even more. Yeah. Okay, so if you kept those flat, the other ones, okay. just to make that $3 million, it has to be much more than 3% or 15%. We have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. There's a motion and a second. Any other conversation? Roll call, Harry. Hart said yes. That's an aye. Right. <clears throat> Whitman, aye. And again, I think we're all not not feeling good about it, but we understand the, the need for it. So thank you for all for all the work that you've done and the, and that we have the data and kind of the thoughtful process behind it. Um, I appreciate that. Uh, just to the board, we'll get a cost estimate uh, from the Treasury Collector's Office for what inclusion of those inserts for those water sewer bills would look like. So we can just absorb that probably in the general fund. Thank you. Thank I appreciate you. that. Sir, can I ask your name? Please. Steve Barrett, B-A-R-R-E-T-T. -T. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me in tonight. And hopefully Thank you. a year from now we come back with much better news. <laughs> that would be the plan. We, we will probably all move. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Steve. And thank you thank for Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. You've given us. I appreciate it. Thanks, Donna, for coming out tonight, too. Um... We have our um, draft, our fiscal year 25 draft uh, goals and objectives. Um, Austin, I think, thank you for sending them out. Um, we have them. I just wanted to get them before us for conversation uh, to get a quick look at. Um, we can, if there's anything glaring, if not, we can have um, a conversation and adoption at a future meeting. But um, I just wanted to because we had talked about them. I think we set these in, I don't remember, the August, July, 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 end of July, right? I so um, trying to get them adopted. Um, we have the select board goals and the town administrator goals. Obviously, the town administrator goals would then be used um, in the review process. Um, and I think a lot of the select board goals were kind of carryover or continuations from uh, previous years, last year's. I have two questions slash comments. Sure. Um, one, I, I think that this everything looks really good from uh, a lot of what we talked about. One question I have related to HR is I know you've got in here for town administrator goals, um, updating personnel folders to meet regulatory compliance that follows like annual performance reviews that, that we talked about or? No, more so. So um, in the most recent uh, financial audit, uh, there was a, wasn't necessarily a finding, I think it was a recommendation from the auditors to make sure that we're in compliance with, so for example, making sure that all employee or payroll folders contain um, like the onboarding paperwork, so I-9, M-4, things like that. Okay. Um, and then also on the personnel side, um, if there is performance reviews, making sure just every, Every piece of documentation for an employee is included in their personnel file. Okay. And I think that there were some inconsistencies there, so I just wanted to make sure that we address that this year. Okay. And so I guess my one comment there is making sure that with whatever we need to as far as personnel files, that we're getting documentation on meetings, anything that needs to. I, I would almost rather over-document and have... <laughs> information at our hands at our disposal if necessary um, I think to have access to. I just want to make sure that that would be kind of covered in some of these. And just a quick example, and, and this is just from years ago, if you were to look at our personnel files, there's some employees that we know of, former employees that we know of that didn't even ever have a personnel file. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so just even that yeah. um, I think oh, is a flag, right? Yeah. So. Um, you know, any new employee, making sure that everything from their job application to their resignation letter. Right. Everything in between. Okay. Right. Yeah, and so I don't know if, Jen, if, I mean, yes, to meet regulatory compliance, but even is it better, can we expand upon kind of and, and 
town policy or something because we have the personnel. I don't remember all of the personnel and HR policy handbook pieces as far as the documentation and everything, but something about best practice or something. Yeah. So that's point. in your goals. That's in your select board goals. But, yeah. but for the, for the ta I mean, town administrator as kind of HR to ensure that all the documentation is maintained, not just yeah. regulatory, like, yes, regulatory-wise, but also... Well, I guess my only question would be, like, isn't it, shouldn't it be a goal every year to follow town policy? Yeah. So I don't know if it should necessarily be, in right. the, it's like an expectation right. of the job. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, and I think it's in my job description. description. <laughs> No, just, and in the new bylaws. Historically, so. just not having a lot of it. I just want to make sure yeah. that we are, whether that's us needing to review, making sure we have proper policies that can be followed, and just, I guess, the follow through of that. I mean, yeah. How do we make sure that those policies are actually being done in the situations that are appropriate? That's, yeah. Yeah. Um, the only other one I had um, to me, which is, I guess, glaringly missing, is we had a lot of conversation on recreation and... I know it's not something that we can accomplish necessarily as you're putting up a facility, but make taking steps to get to that point, doing a study, or even just putting some more into the maintenance of what we have. Um, I think it's painfully obvious that our rec department doesn't have space that they need. Yeah. Um, and I think we need to have Again, whether it's just coming up with a plan and ha continuing those discussions, I'd like to see something more set in stone to allow so for. So, would you? Um, I know some communities. So, I, I first and foremost with the um, town hall, or I, I think where the project is called municipal services facility, that has program space for recreation and safe place. Um, so, I included that in with the kind of that first goal on facility and capital investments. But if you'd like, very similar to what we did with the educational facilities, we could also establish a feasibility study committee for long-term recreational facility needs, having a separated goal. Would that yeah, even something like you see the ball field over behind, in between yeah. Nanquag and Center Tree. Mm -hmm. That thing is so sad. Yeah. yeah. It's awful, yeah. and it needs a new backstop. And again, we're not yeah. talking millions of dollars. Yeah, it, it's in really rough shape, and it that's is, the yeah. only official baseball field we have in town. Right, the yeah. rest are all little league. Right. That, that's our issue, only official. I think the issue over there also is drainage. So there's the it's too wet most of the time to play in the spring. Well, yeah, but that's, but that's we don't that's know. That's all, right? that's you know, all like, our fields. It's, it's so. just the maintenance so, of the you know. Right. Up yeah, I mean, what's I, the point of having but them? I think to be because right now, I mean, I think we can we can throw a lot of stuff on a on a capital plan, which are I think yeah. identified needs. But I think it would be wise for the community to have almost like a, a master plan in some respects yes. for. The recreation department, which would include all of their assets, their staff, mm -hmm. other assets that maybe aren't necessarily controlled by them. So, like for example, Putnam Park, right? right? Um, I think long term that that could be a great recreational asset opportunity. So, yeah. um, just something you know, to and help certainly I, I'd like to have some of the stuff that you guys mentioned, like the pool and some of the baseball fields or basketball courts on the capital plan as well. But strategically probably putting that into some sort of a document. And I think some of that maybe also is included in the open space and recreation plan. Some of it will possibly, pull, definitely between master plan and open space mm -hmm. and rec, we can pull some of that out. But I do think that a, a more kind of Strate targeted, dedicated. strategic, yeah. um, because yeah. a lot of the open space is a lot more of the past. There is a lot of the, the active recreation, but a lot of it's very passive. passive and so yes. this is kind of, yeah. And I also think if you were to do, you know, feasibility study driven by a committee, I think it involves, you know, it's not just the six of us or seven of us um, saying this is what we think recreation and safe place, for example, needs. I think it involves obviously the directors, um, members of the community, just to be a little bit more inclusive of that. So I, because do, I know there's a lot that? of conversation. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because I know a lot, there, there's some even confusion as to like, well, what do you mean Recreation doesn't do like baseball and soccer. That there's the individual nonprofit groups that do that, or football, or, or whatever. And so, just not that that's going to change, but right. some of it is, you know, getting buy-in from those. And I know there's periodically other 
um, nonprofit sports groups that are looking for space or opportunities or whatever. So, and, and I also just on your, you know, in the board policies and other initiatives, the first one, I, you know, because I was trying to, there was, I think our notes from the goal setting session had a lot of redundancy. So I tried to consolidate things a little bit. Um, just, I know that I think it's been expressed in the community and I've heard from area town administrators about ways that we can partner on things like recreation. So I did try to also put that down there. Oh too. yeah. And I, I think that's absolutely something we should look into. Yep. Um, I just did. There's this town is not getting smaller and the yeah. people that are coming into this town are young families mm -hmm. and they're going to have that expectation. So I just, yeah. I've said, said it I, a thousand times. Yeah. It is, it is the biggest missed opportunity. It, is. it really this is. Town. And it can be a huge year after economic year after development year. piece as well. Yes. Yeah. Either yes. directly supporting or supporting the other areas, small businesses, as well. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, but those were mine. Um, thank you. If anybody else has any, like I said, I'm not asking for adoption of these tonight, but I wanted to get them out so everybody could see them. Um, Jen, thank you for your comments. Um, and we can have conversation and, you know, hopefully a, a shorter conversation and then adoption at a future meeting. It's amenable to that. Um, then, is there any other conversation about the Otherwise, I would entertain a motion to adjourn to executive session, not to return to open session, for reason number two, to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel, subject town administrator, and for reason number three, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body and, and the chair so declares. Subject, Fafford versus Town of Rutland. So moved. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second a motion. Paul second. Roll call, Harry. Second, aye. Madison, aye. Madre, aye. Yeah, aye. Whiteman, aye. And we will not return to open session, so...